Hey guys, coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here for a Custom Builders USA purchasing group meeting, uh, but one of my longtime building science buddies, Mark Liberté, is here. Mark actually has a building science uh, training facility here that he brings builders from all over the country in to see him. Now, if you don't know Mark, Mark's an incredible guy. You know, I first uh, found Mark in 2001 during the national mold crisis when I was building houses like I always had for years working for uh, a production builder and suddenly we had a ton of problems and mold was on the national news and it was Mark that took the scales off my eyes and taught me about building science. I've learned so much from this amazing dude over the years. Um, so Mark's gonna meet me here at his shop and we are going to uh, talk about building science and check out his shop. There he is, Mark. Hey, Matt. Hey, brother. How are you? What do you have in Arizona? Man, it's uh, it's been fun to be here so far. What a beautiful place. It's a, it's a fabulous place. The mountains are incredible here, Mark. Well, if you come from a Minnesota climate, which is uh, way too cold, <laughs> and you move here, you suddenly realize that the borders are open and you can pass Iowa. So I've uh, decided this is my new spot. So it's awesome. Man, it's beautiful Welcome here. Welcome to CI Live. So tell me what happens here, Mark. What's uh, what do we got here? Well, CI Live is kind of a brainchild of about a two years' work of trying to get. Uh, uh, builders to come to a place where we really change the way in which they think about building enclosures. So we do a two-day course, uh, about 25 to 30 people come, fairly involved training where we do two hours of classroom or a little less sometimes, and we go back into our lab. And so Ooh. the idea is to really change how we make decisions. So I like the idea, we call it... Um, back into the lab, well, I like we li that. We like to call it the term guided discovery. Okay. Because once we guide us all through a process of change and scope, uh, we can make better decisions. Man, look at this place, Mark. This is awesome. Look at all these mock-up walls. All kinds of stuff. We got a little laboratory going little lab. on here. Yeah, Justin, my partner, he comes and we, we, we've been trying to make him wear a white lab coat. <laughs> uh, but he, we've yet to do it. He's still got the, uh, the hair to fit the uh, scientist. But, uh, oh, that's awesome. Been able to do that. So what are you showing here, Mark? What, 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 what's the uh, quick tour on the lab? Well, we think that you know one of the great challenges that our industry has is that if we don't figure out how things work, we're either work together or work within the world of physics, we're challenged by uh, making decisions that might be hearsay or a guess. So one of the couple things that we do, we try things in water, we set OSB and different materials and see how long they take to swell. This is a really cool little study we did with a kind of a low perm uh, a house wrap product. Put some water inside, you can see that's in there, and that's been in there since August of, uh, of 17, and you can see there's still some water in there. Um, this is one we used with a higher permeating product, it's actually a Tyvek product, and we've had to replace the water three times. So all that represented is what's that permeability of product based on the moisture molecules from one side transferring to the other. And here in Arizona, it's dry enough that we can do a pretty good permeability test uh, almost any time of the year. We also do little things about um, capillary and convection, things like that that teach us as an industry why it matters to understand the principles of physics. This is good, Mark. What do we got here? This looks cool. like something I want to see. Look I at know. this. This is Matt Rising or something. Oh, stuff. yeah, baby. You, this is all I about like to touch and feel it all. <laughs> yeah, baby. So what we figure is that look at all the tapes that you can find at the store. You go to the uh, lumber yard and there's a whole roll of tape. You say, well, I'll take this one for 30 bucks instead of that one for 50 seems logical. And what we decided to do is in a climate like this, we've started putting the products and uh, putting them in. And the funny thing about Arizona is we can do stick this outside in the sun and get pretty much heat. Whew. And uh, the backside of sidings and, and some materials based on the color of the siding can be 180, 200 degrees in some sunny days. Wow. So what is the, the product's capability of handling that? If I'm going to depend on my tape to seal my building up and it fails, that's a pretty big risk I'm willing to take. So we put these on different products. We have rubberized asphalts. All of them failed in terms of their adhesion and their peeling tests. We've got butyls and we have acrylics. And those products perform quite remarkably. You mm -hmm. should only probably stay in the butyl uh, acrylic category. And then we took some products where we've tried things like fluid applied. As you know, these are sort of the new the new products on the market. This is one by Henkel Corporation. Um, there's a couple by, uh, by DuPont. Some other ones where they're looking at the adhesion. You can see how well that really bonds to the products. So we do this and we have a little temperature sensor here there and try to get it up to about 250. So most of the products uh, in, the, in the butyl categories have held up pretty well at 250. Wow. Below that, um, uh, you know, most of the tapes will seal, but that's not realistic in terms of where they're being applied. And Mark, what I like about this, if I can pop in real quick, yeah. is, uh, you know, over the years I've used a lot of products. I'm always looking for the best product uh, that I can find for my houses. 
And sometimes that means choosing from different manufacturers or making a switch. And when I drive job sites, I see builders using different materials, different manufacturers, A, B, and C in the building. They don't always know what they're getting into That's if great. they don't test it. And so with you training builders to go, look, if you're gonna use different products, they may work perfectly well, but let's think about it, let's train it. And you're giving people like me the tools to go back to their shop and feel confident in doing that. That's really cool. Yeah, I think, I think we sometimes we just guess. Uh, and sometimes we use cost as the defining factor because we don't know any better. Yep. So this is kind of the art, little art thing we've been doing with fluid applied. As you Ooh. know, that's been on the market for a while. And the fluid applied stuff is uh, it's in this interesting spot, really. It's a little, quite a bit more expensive, but it's got some ideas. It's like pouring a neoprene suit on a building, protecting over the nail penetrations and all the seams. So we looked at some of these. Now, this is a, a really cool product. This is by DuPont. It's called Fluid Applied, but we realized that you got to be really careful what you adhere it to. So if you have the regular Tyvek and then you applied the, uh, they don't recommend that you apply their fluid applied directly to the product. And here's and, why, because look, it why. doesn't stick to it. It doesn't stick to it. So it's but it sticks away. tenaciously to that OSB. To the OSB Look at that. and to their tape. So they recommend that there's a tape bond in the transition between the house wrap and the next substrate. And yep. it bonds incredibly well. And you can see what a good gap is. Yep. We've tried some other products. We put actually an, uh, a, a proper seal there. And it allows us to check the tenacity of the seal. Does it yep. have flexibility? Does it still What's maintain What's this one? That looks like polywall. It is polywall. It's actually yep. polywall. There is the joint sealer mm -hmm. and um, their seam seal joint. And then we put the fluid applied over the top. That's cool. As you can see the variation in thickness. Now they have recommendations of how thick and how well it's done. So you got to be really careful when you trawl it out. If you can read through it, it's probably not thick enough. Right, right. And so it, this is blue barrier, and then you've got a different fluid applied, probably a similar technology. It looks like exactly. they're compatible. Very similar chemistry. It's and better. you've got a sheet of OSB and a two by there, and look at that. It's it's spanning that joint and gluing it all together. No and you can problem. imagine it can have a pretty good amount of flex. It says we know that this is going to shrink, this is going to move, the yep. building's going to flex. It's got to be flexible. And this looks like Delta Vent SA, is that right? It is Delta Vent SA. And, and look how nice. well that sticks to that. Yeah, and if you look at a product. As you know that, that that applies to the to the OSB very tenacious in its application to the OSB yep. and then we know that we've got to make connections window connections yep. and uh, we've tried That's different, stretch different tape tapes from uh, Huber yeah it is and, and so in terms of adhesion it's pretty impressive and yeah. so we try that product it seems to bond well. well and then we took a, a, a sheet of uh, kind of this is this product here what it was kind of cool is we put it in there and then we, we make it so that we can peel it away and see what its properties are check that out so if you got something that you're putting very on a flexible. building and you go like I need the building to move and never lose my seal mm -hmm. that's what that would be like and here's another one this is the dupont one so we kind of make this so you put this on like uh, a plastic wrap basically, yeah, it's like right? a plastic it's almost like saran wrap so now i play i put that on there and i can check uh, how it goes what's what are the what's the properties the thickness of the properties will it bridge uh, gaps and uh what's interesting is i can kind of stick it and i can peel it back off itself that's so it's got some really nice characteristics in terms of bond and then we play with those pieces so and then what do you have choice. here this is uh this is huber zip it huber looks like. zip yeah we figured that you know if if you're looking at something that you really wanted to maintain a good sealed joint there's a, a properties that you could get there you can kind of see what a nice job of fluid applied on the seams and i'm a pretty big fan of making sure we use something like a fluid applied on the joints and the mm -hmm. nails and the penetrations as a base sheathing it's a very good sheathing and i believe the joint seams and penetrations need to be sealed as well yeah good stuff mark very cool well, What's, uh, what else you got in the shop? What's, well, um, kind of cool. As you know, you know, Matt, you've been you've been doing this for years, trying to figure out how we thermally enhance buildings. Mm -hmm. And um, as you've done in your perfect wall application with the the one you won the awards for, and the recognition is the exterior insulation. Mm -hmm. We know that that's going to be the direction that the industry will go, and that's in that spot. But we got to figure out how to do that. Yeah. And as you imagine, um, putting this is two inches of foam. This is Delta Vent SA. Yep. And so we're going to be putting a, a, a layer of Roxel here. But we realized, why do you put the window in, build it out to the right plane, have the trim, the flashing, all the caps, custom make the flashings. It's a fairly uh, complex process. Yeah, so it when is. You, you can pull the tops off and you'll, uh, how do you secure that? Do you mastic it? Do you put tape on it? Or do you fluid apply it? So yeah. each one of those things we keep trying. And this, so you buck this out with a two by and then fluid apply it. Is right? that what's going on here? Right, so I have a little bit of thermal loss here at the two by, but I'm trying to buck that out to meet the, uh, the weather pr protection layers. So right. if I put the insulation there, now the window runs proud. So let's say if you had two inch Roxel now, you'd bump that Roxel up right there. Correct. And then your cladding would go on top. Correct. That's yeah, cool. Whether it was stuck over anything else, we would do I that. I like, Mark, how you're showing different products here, too. Look at this. We've got a great um, peel and stick, permeable house wrap, Delta Vent SA. Very bomber. And you've but used it. I've used it a ton. Yeah. And you know what? Flex wrap is a great 
product. Been around the market for a long time from DuPont, but it really makes a great window sill. And look how you use that as your bond to, or as kind of your bridge material with this fluid applied. Right. So everything is just sticking well. This is this is a cool display. And you can see in the bump out, we had to go, with, we had to flash the sill, of course, bring it down, use the flex wrap to go down around yep. and out and still get the corners. So and, it worked out slick. And Mark, for someone thinking, why is there no fluid applied right here? Give me the answer to that. Yeah, we had uh, we had some builders we were working with and the guy started heading down around it. And we're like, stop, stop. We want the uh, this to be the, ex, the exfiltration spot. So any water that should get into the open we know with variations in thickness and, and opportunities and expansion and contraction, water will get underneath here. So on the inside, we're going to back dam that and the water will leak out through the bottom, drain under the uh, rock sole, nothing but net. That's good stuff. Last display here. What do you got here, Mark? Well, this is kind of a thermal buck. You've used this before as well. Yep. And you've got, uh, actually, I think you have a friend that's working with this stuff. And I, I think it's quite interesting. You know, it's a, it's a dense uh, foam with a really interesting paint layer that's incredibly tough yep. and we tried to buck it out and show that we this one here has, has one inch of foam but then we could really apply the window here secure it in this location and then either do weather protection on top of this or try to seal all the seams in the foam as a layer of weather protection and thermal protection that's pretty cool yeah we're pretty big fans of using weather protection for its function and thermal insulation for its function i think that's a nice mix i don't think we're quite ready for the the marriage all all the time Mark, you're awesome, man. Thank you so much for the tour. This is quite a place. Uh, for anyone watching this video who's not gotten training from you, how many seminars do you think I've been to with you, Mark? Too many, I would think, probably. At least 50, probably. <laughs> Too many for you, I, but uh, that's amazing. And and, uh, and this is about 31 years we've been doing this, and it's kind of why we decided to bring people here. When, when you get to go to a two-hour workshop, yeah. you, you, you get a little bit or you get too much, yep. and you gotta come back 50 times. Well, how about if you just came back a couple times? <laughs> That'd be awesome. So if someone watching this who doesn't uh, know you, Mark, or hasn't been to your training, how can they find what you've got training-wise coming up? Yeah, if they just go to constructioninstruction.com, there's a spot there that says CI Live. And okay. you can look at the dates where we'll have classes on zero energy buildings, HVAC, and building science and building technology. And so constructioninstruction.com. There'll Correct. be a link in the description below. Mark, so fun to uh, visit you. I'm so glad I was able to uh, make the trip over to see you while I was in Phoenix. It's always such a pleasure to see you. Guys, if you can, go see Mark. Incredible building science trainer. I've known Mark since 2001. And... I've gained so much from coming to see him. And really, if you don't have the principles and the foundations for building science, you're in a deficit as a builder. So you need to get trained uh, by Mark and learn both the fundamentals and the really nitty gritty, which I've learned both from him. Thanks, Mark, for having me. Such a pleasure, man. Take care. All right, all right man. Have a great day. We love to see you guys easy. soon.